Hi everyone, it's been a while since our last vlog, uh, perhaps about a year, I think. We decided to do very short vlogs, a new series in which we answer questions that we take from YouTube comments, Facebook comments, or Facebook groups we, we participate in. So my first question, uh, I got it from a Facebook group recently, is can I legally carry my sword in the streets in Japan? The answer is yes. But let's start by uh, explaining the difference between a Nyaito and a Shinken. A Nyaito is a blunt sword, uh, often made of aluminium alloy, so it doesn't cut and cannot be sharpened. You can carry your Nyaito around as much as you want. Uh, it's not under any specific weapons regulations. This is why actually the Nyaito exists. The Shinken is a live blade, um, Japanese katana. So there are very tough regulations regarding weapons in Japan, not only guns, but also swords and knives and really strict regulation. Uh, basically, all swords, all shinken must be registered. Uh, it's registered at the Bunkacho, the Agency for Cultural Affairs. You have also to declare your sword to the nearest police station. Then you have a, a small piece of paper which details a few informations about the sword. This paper must always stay with the sword. When you carry it or if you send it to a craftsman for polishing or whatever, you must attach the registration to the sword all the time. Japanese people are not legally required to carry an ID, but foreigners are. Basically, you need a reason. You need a reason to carry the sword. So if you're just going to show, show it off to a friend, it's not a good reason. You, a good reason is going to the dojo. It is said that you must be on a direct route from home to the dojo. Uh, obviously, no one respects this rule because people have to take their swords to work before they go to the dojo or whatever. So, But I would recommend as much as possible if you can go back home before going to the dojo uh, to carry your swords uh, as few times as possible. Uh, it's safer uh, this way, especially because Japanese policemen, depending on the areas, especially in Tokyo, uh, can get a little nervous when they see foreigners carrying swords. This is also why, even if it's not mandatory, uh, I would recommend to carry your dojo registration with you. The dojo registration will uh, allow you to prove uh, immediately to the, the policeman that you have a reason to carry a sword, so it's probably uh, a good idea to have it with you. I must also stress on two uh, specific points if you're coming in or, or going out Japan with a sword. Uh, there is an import procedure when you're coming to Japan uh, that must be respected, so at the airport first you declare your sword. You declare your sword because smuggling a weapon in Japan uh, can just land you in prison. So. Don't do that. Uh, Japanese are very nervous with everything that concerns weapon. If you have an Yaito, you must also declare it. It will just take a few minutes. They will probably use a magnet to check if the blade uh, is made of an alloy. If the magnet doesn't react, then you're good. If it's a Shinken, it will require that you go through a registration process for a very good reason. If you leave Japan with a blade, you have to unregister the sword. When you come back with the same blade, you have to register it again. And the registration process is always the same. It requires an examination by sports experts and it can take quite a lot of time, like weeks to months, uh, especially when it's uh, customs doing it because customs are a little slow and you have to leave the sport at the airport or the customs. But it's not a very comfortable situation. I would recommend trying to get a, an import permit before leaving Japan if you are, um, leave Japan for a short period of, of time so you can bring your sword back uh, without any hassle. Swords imported in Japan must be Japanese swords, Nihonto. Uh, no Chinese made swords, uh, no foreign made swords, only Japanese swords. So if you have a Chinese sword, don't bring it to Japan. It will get confiscated at the airport and probably destroyed. And be careful about the uh, Gunto, the swords from World War II, because it might not get a Torokusho certification, uh, registration. I've heard a few cases uh, like that, uh, Gunto that were stolen by American militaries uh, after the war and that uh, people couldn't bring back to Japan. Uh, it's very poor quality swords, so it's kind of understandable, but yes, be careful about that. Well, when you're leaving Japan, uh, you need an export permit. So before leaving Japan, you have to uh, like unregister the sword at the Bunkacho. Uh, so it's not a piece of art anymore, but a, a weapon that you're then not allowed to carry wide in Japan, but that you can take out of Japan. It's kind of tricky. This is not a very complicated process. It's uh, it's quite fast. Uh, 
but when it's, once it's unregistered, as I, as I said, uh, you have to register it back. So uh, if you buy a sword in Japan, go back home with it, make sure it's unregistered. If you live in Japan, buy a sword and want to travel with it and come back to Japan, make sure you have the export permit and re-import permit before you leave. And if you're coming to Japan with a Japanese sword, then you will need to register it. And since the sword has to be in Japan in order to go to the, the Shinsa, the examination process, then basically you don't have much choices. It will take weeks for the, the Shinsa to take place and for the, the registration to come out. In 15 years in Japan, I only had to uh, show any ID because I had weapons with me to the police like once, I think. And uh, I've heard of very, very few cases until recently. But the past like year or two, uh, I've heard many more cases. Uh, sometimes it's swords, shinai, boken, whatever, weapons, uh, because you have this big carry bag, so it, it's very easy to spot for the, for the police. It seems that the police is a little more concerned now, probably because there are many more foreigners uh, coming to Japan than uh, 10 or 15 years ago. If people tell you that you will never get control checked by Japanese police, well, don't take the risk. So I guess that's it for uh, today. Uh, we have answered, I hope, in details this question. If you have any questions you'd like us to answer in those videos, leave a comment in the, in the comment sections in YouTube below or on Facebook, or you can drop us an email if you don't want your comment to be public. Um, hope to see you soon on Say the Shop and um, have a nice training. Goodbye.